Dr. D here, how are you? I wanted to continue to share information on different types of abuse. I want you all to be able to engage in healthy relationships with individuals. And some people aren't very sure of what a healthy relationship looks like. Some people have come from family dynamics and environments where it has breeded abuse and they're not really sure what that looks like. So I've been sharing some videos and I've just outline a few things about relationships. Um, for example, a toxic or abusive relationship compared to a healthy and nurturing relationship. And as you can see, there is a lot of different characteristics. And so I outline uh, different types of communication and behaviors as well as communication and behaviors of the healthier relationship. So communication in an unhealthy relationship looks like yelling, insulting, blaming, humiliation, um, taking things out of context every single time that you're communicating with this person, lying, belittling, name calling, criticizing, being accusatory, and then behaviors. The person is intolerant, intolerant of anything that you're doing, but it is expecting you to be tolerant of all of their behaviors, be it healthy or not, which more than likely they're not healthy. Isolating, stalking. Stalking can mean, you might think, well, how can my partner stalk me? Well, if your partner is calling you every few minutes or texting you every few minutes, what are you doing? Um, how long have you been doing that? Why you didn't tell me you did this? Just want you to account for every minute of your whereabouts. That's a stalking. Maybe not in the legal sense, because you, if you all are married, but it's stalking in a relationship in order to create um, control of your behaviors. Um, constant monitoring, you know, kind of line, along the same lines, but the stalking is more of the physical. They can show up at your job, like not even tell you that they're coming for, for lunch. Is that a problem if your partner shows up to surprise you for lunch? No, but if your partner, after an argument, shows up and, uh, and, and, and has accused you of cheating, maybe, that's another uh, form of abuse, like accusing you of doing things and they have no reason of accusing you to do those things and they show up at your job to intimidate you and you scared, you know, you, you thought they were at work or you thought they were a couple hours away or at home sleeping and all of a sudden they popped at the job after they heard that maybe a coworker gave you a nice compliment. Um, intimidation, silent treatment, silent treatment or emotional distance. Now emotional distance can be appropriate in a relationship if you inform the person of that emotional distance and you're using it as a boundary. But in a toxic relationship, emotional boundaries look like, I'm sorry, um, uh, the silent treatment looks like an unhealthy boundary where the person is just tr uh, essentially trying to isolate you. Um, they're making you feel uh, uncomfortable. They're not talking to you. They're, they're acting like as if you aren't even there. And um, that that is very uncomfortable. It's very abusive even if you try to communicate with the person. They're very cold and absent. Um, their behavior is inappropriate. Um, not only is their communication out of context, their behavior is inappropriate for the setting. Um, that could relate to someone belittling you in, in public uh, with a conversation that the two of you could have when you got back home from an event. Instead, they're having the conversation with you um, in public, and that's inappropriate. You know, you should resolve a conflict, a deep, deep conflict that may resolve some personal information coming out outside of the public view. Also, uh, physical things such as pushing, slamming doors, staring, destroying things, mishandling money, um, and making decisions without you. Now, if they're by themselves, they're fine. But if you, the two of you are in a relationship and that person makes big, big decisions, I'm not talking about what they eat, but making decisions um, about that would affect your well-being on a consistent basis. And then whenever you confront them about that, you're made to believe that you didn't even have a right to that decision or that the decision was okay, even though they didn't consult you or they'll say something to the effect of, well, I knew you'd be okay with it. Okay, and then now look at a healthy relationship. There's not a lot of things listed, but these are very, very good things that you want in a relationship. And they can be expressed in so many different ways. Um, healthy intent. The, the communication is with a healthy intent, meaning the motive of the communication is to resolve an issue or, or to communicate an idea or to communicate an experience. It's open and honest. It's not deceptive. 
uh, in an unhealthy relationship, that could look like um, not telling the whole truth. It's like, oh, well, I didn't think you needed to know, though. Oh, I didn't think it was a big deal, but they weren't really open and honest. The communication is also peaceful yet confrontational. It's immediate. Um, it's not passive aggressive. It's direct. It's also uplifting. Um, it's feedback. It's sharing what your experience is. Um, it's not degrading. And it's with the actual person. An abusive person oftentimes may go and communicate to everyone else um, when they should be coming to communicate with you. Um, they're consulting with everyone else and it makes you feel more isolated because then people have already developed an opinion about a situation that you haven't even had an, all, uh, an opportunity to resolve on your own. And then finally, here's uh, about six behaviors. It's intimate, it's close, communication is close. Even when you're having an argument and it might feel tough at that moment, it's still uh, intimate because you feel connected to that person, um, which leads you right here. You, you're, you're having it, you, you love this person, you feel the love even when you're arguing. Um, you don't feel more distant because you're having uh, a healthy confrontation. It's appropriate. It's, it's, it's settled, you know, communication is settled and behavior is settled in, an, in a way that is appropriate for the situation. Um, in other words, the, the time fits the crime, you know, if it's something that you did wrong or something that uh, caused, that you offended someone um, and they, they aren't saying, okay, well, I'm not going to talk to you for a whole week because you said something out of the way. It's encouraging. Uh, behaviors are consistent. Over here, these can come in so many different forms, shapes and forms. You know that the person is abusive or you can feel it in your gut and you're denying it, but you're confused because it's so inconsistent. If you're in a healthy relationship, it's very consistent and it's loving. So um, I'll take a snapshot of this and post it beside uh, the video. But wanting you to know that there is a clear distinction between a healthy nurturing relationship, a healthy and nurturing relationship. And so again, um, I'm going to continue to uh, give talks on abuse because I want people to be in healthy relationships. I want them to find healthy partners, healthy friendships, and share this video with someone else and comment below what do you think about um, relationships, healthy as well as toxic.